and the House of Representatives were, be, were to be elected by the people. So it, it's a checks and balances. Y'all have learned about that, right? Okay, so I want you guys to get out your constitutions. And I want you to turn to Article 2, Section 1. Somebody stand and read the first two paragraphs. Article 2, Section 1. The executive power shall be vested in a president of the United States of America. He shall hold his office during the term of four years, and together with the vice president chosen for the same term, be elected as follows. Each state shall appoint in such manner as the legislature there, thereof may direct a number of elect, electors <laughs> okay. equal to the whole number of senators and representatives to which the state may be entitled in the Congress. But no senator or representative or person holding an office of trust or profit under the United States shall be appointed by an elector. Thank you. Okay, and then it goes on to, to tell you kind of about electors, and then you'll see over to the side it says um, it was changed a little bit, the wording by Amendment 12. Um, okay, so how is the president elected? by the Electoral College. Is it your vote that decides the president? No. Okay, we're gonna see. If you guys can show that video, it's the, um, the first one that you two did vote count. of the Electoral College during presidential election years. But what exactly is the Electoral College? Simply said, it is a group of people appointed by each state who formally elect the president and vice president of the United States. To understand how this process began and how it continues today, we can look at the Constitution of the United States. Article 2, Section 1, Clause 2 of the Constitution. It specifies how many electors each state is entitled to have. Since 1964, there have been 538 electors in each presidential election. How did they decide on the number 538? Well, the number of electors is equal to the total voting membership of the United States Congress. 435 representatives, plus 100 senators, and three electors from the District of Columbia. Essentially, the Democratic candidate and Republican candidate are each trying to add up the electors in every state so that they surpass 270 electoral votes or just over half of 538 votes, and win the presidency. So how do states even get electoral votes? Each state receives a particular number of electors based on population size. The census is conducted every 10 years, so every time the census happens, states might gain or lose a few electoral votes. Let's say you're a voter in California, a state with 55 electoral votes. If your candidate wins in California, they get all 55 of the state's electoral votes. If your candidate loses, they get none. This is why many presidential candidates want to win states like Texas, Florida, and New York. If you currently add up the electoral votes of those three states, you would have 96 electoral votes. Even if a candidate won North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, Vermont, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and West Virginia, they would only gain 31 electoral votes total from those eight states. Here's where it can get a little tricky. On a rare occasion, like in the year 2000, someone can win the popular vote, but
but failed to gain 270 electoral votes. This means that the winner may have won and collected their electoral votes by small margins, winning just enough states with just enough electoral votes, but the losing candidate may have captured large voter margins in the remaining states. If this is the case, the very large margins secured by the losing candidate in the other states would add up to over 50% of the ballots cast nationally. Therefore, the losing candidate may have gained more than 50% of the ballots cast by voters, but failed to gain 270 of the electoral votes. Some critics of the Electoral College argue the system gives an unfair advantage to states with large numbers of electoral votes. Think of it this way. It is possible for a candidate to not get a single person's vote, not one vote, in 39 states or the District of Columbia, yet be elected president by winning the popular vote in just 11 of these 12 states. California, New York, Texas, Florida, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Ohio, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Georgia, or Virginia. This is why both parties pay attention to these states. However, others argue that the Electoral College protects small states, such as Rhode Island, Vermont, and New Hampshire, and even geographically large states with small populations, like Alaska, Wyoming, and the Dakotas. That's because a candidate can't completely ignore small states, because in a close election, every electoral vote counts. There are certain states that have a long history of voting for a particular party. These are known as safe states. For the past four election cycles, in 1996, 2000, 2004, and 2008, Democrats could count on states like Oregon, Maryland, Michigan, and Massachusetts, whereas the Republicans could count on states like Mississippi, Alabama, Kansas, and Idaho. States that are teetering between parties are called swing states. In the past four election cycles, Ohio and Florida have been swing states twice providing electoral votes for a Democratic candidate and twice providing electoral votes for a Republican candidate. Think about it. Do you live in a safe state? If so, is it a Democratic or Republican safe state? Do you live in a swing state? Are your neighboring states swing or safe? Is the population in your state increasing or decreasing? And do not forget, when you're watching the electoral returns on election night every four years and the big map of the United States is on the screen, Know that the magic number is 270 and start adding. votes go to that candidate okay that's how it works so for instance um, it showed a picture of Al Gore and uh, George Bush in that election we had a tie in electoral votes and it all came down to Florida and in Florida um, they had to count the actual popular vote they counted them one by one by hand and in Florida they had um, you know, where we, how we vote is we have a line in the United States. So if we are voting for, say, Donald Trump, we're going to put a line there and, and put it in a machine and it's counted. Okay? In Florida, at the time, they had a punch system. So they had like a little card here and they punched it out, punch. And some of them, there was a big um, uproar because some of the little punches didn't go all the way through and they were hanging. And some of the punches were just barely punched. And they were called hanging shads or pregnating shads. We heard that on the news constantly. And who did that vote go for? And as you know, uh, George Bush ended up winning Florida. But your popular vote does count. So who can tell me how many electors we have in Alabama? We have nine. We get that number based on what? We have two senators. There are two senators in every, from every state. 
And then in the House of Representatives, it's based on population. So the population in Alabama means that we get seven, seven representatives, okay, in the House of Representatives. So our electoral votes are the senators, the number of senators we have, plus the number of, in the House of Representatives. So we have nine. And that's how we elect the president, okay? So what we're going to do now is what you did in there was you did a taste test. And if you had number one, who, raise your hand if you like number one the best. That was Coke. And if you liked number two the best, that was Pepsi. And so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out based on your vote as an elector, we're going to turn the map, if you can put the map up, we may need to turn down the lights just a little bit so we can see. Okay, so I'm going to call out a state, and you're going to stand and tell me, Nebraska or whatever, you're going to tell me um, if you were one or two and how many votes you have, okay? So, JoJo, I want you to do, you're going to be counting red, which is number one, and you're going to be counting two. Whichever one of you get to 270 the, the fastest, you're going to be, that's going to be the winner, okay? So who had Alabama? Stand and say. Uh, my name is Mark Williams from Pleasant High School. I picked one. One, and ha that's Alabama, and you have, and your number one, that's Coke. How many elector votes do you have? It's on your sheet. Nine. Nine. So you're red, right? Okay, so nine goes to red. All right, who has Alaska? I do. Anthony Pompa from Uni High School in Arkansas. Um, oh, I have Alaska. I'll take number two, and there's three votes. Number two is Pepsi, three. Okay, um, Tennessee. Hi, my name is Lauren Miller from Red County High School. Um, I have Tennessee, and I'm going to have eleven votes. Number one, Coke, eleven. Here's a big one, California. Who has California? Um, my name is Jenna Brown from Surgery High School, and I picked number one, California. California. So California has 55 votes. Is it Pepsi or Coke? You pick number one or number one, so that's red. So 55. Okay, let's do um, Kansas. Okay. I'm Abigail Wheeler from Hage High School in Tennessee, and I voted for number two, and I'm from Kansas with six votes. Number two is blue. All right, let's try Washington State. Stand quickly. I'm Anna Mendoza. I chose number two. Um, 12 votes. Number two. Okay, let's try Texas. My name is Mrs. Kavia. I'm from High, and I chose number one, which is 30, uh, 38. 38, Georgia. Okay, so Montana. I'm Aubrey Johnson, and I'm from school, and I chose number two, Montana. Number two is Pepsi. Montana. Montana. So you need to change back. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's try. Um, I heard somebody last night was from Louisiana. So let's try Louisiana. My name is Olivia Anderson from Baby High School, Arkansas, and I number two. Number two, Pepsi. Eight. Okay, Oregon, stand quickly and say. Um, I'm in table. I got seven votes for one. Number one, seven. All right, Idaho. My name is Peggy Callender from Parkview Baptist. Uh, I chose number two, Idaho. Number two, Idaho. Okay, 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 Uh, I know I'm from Yeah, High School. 
Martinez from Jemison High School, Huntsville, and mine was number two with 29. Florida. 29. <laughs> yeah, they're adding them up on the side. Okay, so, um, all right, so let's do North Carolina. I don't know what's left. Just turn on the light. Number 15 votes. Number 215, Pepsi. Where are we? 131, where are we? 152. Okay, um, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. My name is Zach Zabwa from Grand High School in Mississippi. I chose number two for Wisconsin, which has 10 votes. Let's try Ohio. New Jersey. Toby Lynn from James Clements High School for Pennsylvania with 20 votes. I choose number one. I'm Luke Armstrong from James Clemens High School. I'll pick number one uh, for Utah at six votes. Six. I was trying to do one that I had. Um, did we do Washington State already? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you go. I'm from Bonneville High School, and uh, I think number two is South Carolina. Uh, what, are, what are our numbers? Do not Okay. <coughs> Two. My name is Hannah Shaw from East Lonson, 
Jacob Nelson from Station Camp, and I choose uh, number two for Michigan, 16 votes. Uh, my name is Ari Grish from James Clemens High School. I have five electoral votes for number two. I'm Taylor Ben Simmons from Buffalo High School, and I have Delaware with three votes. Oh, that's just number two. Ah. What do you have your own voice for? We told you guys to study your little booklets that came with your uh, binders. I knew that. The Constitution. So, you're going to be using the knowledge you've not gained from reading those books in what we call Power Grab. Now, I'm not going to explain Power Grab because I can't remember. So, let's give it up for Colonel Dunlap to explain this. And, and just because of the previous exercise that we had, I think uh, we had an election. We had, we should have had a hail for the chief. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Okay, the way this works is that there will be a question raised. You'll see it in the next chart, and, I, and we can skip through the flow, and I'll just explain it without without that. Bring up the next chart, please. Okay. Now, how many, how many uh, branches are there of the government? Three. Right, okay. So we, we sort of have you representing various branches. Now, this was a form that we used before, but the key points here is that the divisions, go to the next, next slide. Okay, this will be first, first question, and you'll see that we've got, down at the bottom, we've got points for teams. The team that answers first, will be awarded three points. If there's additional points to be made about the, that particular question, uh, other teams can grab a couple of points or, or whatever until we run out of, of the answers. And uh, they're gonna moderate it. This is uh, Michelle Smith. Uh, she and I will be the arbitrators. And so we can pass this and, and you'll have a couple minutes to think about it. Whoever raises their hand first will be able to speak first. There are some deficit points for getting it wrong. So don't be as, 
uh, they, I, I guess they call that a spring bot or something, or whatever, at any rate. So we'll award five points for, for being right. We'll award negative three for being wrong. And we'll, we'll place this in order, okay? So the first team will get five, the first, next team will get three, depending on what, what there is relative to that particular question. Okay. All right, guys, so keep in mind, you can have your constitution out with you, but knowing it off the top of the head will get you more points. All right, you guys ready to play? If you guys will look in your books, um, just in my own experience of using this book, um, turn to page, page number 34. Yours, your guys may be different than mine. But see where it says amendments at the top? If you'll go down, does that say article one? Yes. Okay, from here on back, it shouldn't say articles. It should say amendments. So if you go like on page 42, up at the top where it says article 7, that's a misprint. All those need to say amendments. Okay? So when you are uh, claiming an amendment, make sure you say amendment because it's different than the articles. Okay? All right, so our first question is, let me find my question. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh it is, okay, sorry. All right. First question, by the way, if you don't shoot that hand up quick, you'll be able to answer. How are U.S. Senators chosen now in comparison to the original intent of the Constitution? You can look in your constitutional book. Thank you. 
How does the impeachment trial occur? And, and this is this is a multiple point question. Dun 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 dun. This is your point. So. is when you hear that impeachment, it doesn't mean that they're fired, okay? What, the, what happens in impeachment is the House of Representatives brings an impeachment. What an impeachment is is just charges. That means you're being formally charged. The Senate, once the, once the House of Representatives brings the charge against the candidate, or against, I'm sorry, not the candidate, against the congressman, president, or whatever, or it's actually vice president and president, then the Senate tries the case. Okay, and that's how that's how um, someone is left office. That's never happened. There's been two impeachments, uh, but the Senate found them not guilty both times. Who can tell me who's been impeached? Don't put it in that who. Andrew Johnson. And then there's been another one. Charged. Okay. And, and before we proceed, what it sounded like in this line of questioning is that, that T1 2 gets award points, but T1, T1 and, and Mr. Zabel, mm -hmm. but, but we don't know the team, Mr. Zabel. You didn't announce it. Oh. So, what I'm saying is, for everybody else coming up, announce what team you're from, too, please. Please. Okay? We will award it to the team and not just you. Okay? So, All right. from that one point, we have both yellow team and circuit team. And we had uh, blue team, dark team, first team. So, that was that. All right, next question is, what is treason? Who tries the president or vice president on accounts of treason?
you said there's points for if you just know it you know you said it's really it's, somebody said it's a lot better if you just know it so she actually knew it too So who's the only president that didn't serve two terms? Well, more than two terms, let me say that. Who? Yeah.
So when we say the question, listen up. Um, we're going to keep on going. Why don't you bring the lights up if you're going to do that so they can see who's responding. No, out here too. Uh, there's going to be four points. Look at those books hard. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Elijah, why don't you recommend that if someone knows the answer, instead of raising their hand, they stand up very quickly. So it'll help separate who's first, who's second, and so on. So bring out the lights up here, please, Thomas, because we've got to see the audience to know who's Okay, so we're going to try to try Karawadi's idea for this. Uh, if you have the answer, you stand up and you say your team like name real quick. And you just be like, for Joseph, if you want the answer, you just be like, team two. Got it? If I hear team two first, I'll go for it. If I hear team four first, you go for it. Okay, I won't look at this. If I just hear you say team four, go. Just do it. Okay, okay. So, uh, next question. Okay, it was a little bit close. So this, this is going to be a true or false. Microphone. Oh. Yeah. I did have one. All right. With a super majority, the Senate passes and enacts health care law. What's, What's your the question? It's a true or false. It's a true or false. With a super no, majority, the Senate passes and enacts health care law. Health care law. Why? She answered it. She answered it. That's true. Okay. So it's a two-part question. She got that part right. President signed the law. President signed the law. Signed into law. How a bill becomes a law that's in Article One, Section Seven. the vice president and himself. Tell me why. Good job, everybody. Did really well. Thank you. So let's see the results. Okay, guys. So we have the um, the tally. I just, first off, I just want to say to all of you, I'm proud of you guys for studying. You did really good. I saw a lot of smiles. You tried jumping, up, looking, at grinning over there, ear to ear. Logan playing big. Look at him, knowing his stuff. Everybody did really well. So here we go. All right. Team one, 20 points. Team two, 10 points. Team three, 10 points. Woo! Team four, 18 points. Woo! Team five. 10 points, team six, 10 points. Let's give it up for team one. And as a division, they have the most points. So in overall, division A wins.
But at the same time, I'm proud of everybody for trying. You really got into it. And for those who didn't know stuff, now you know a little bit more about our country. For, for those of you guys whose divisions did not win this competition, we'll have other competitions and learn your lessons from maybe air of communication or air of knowing the knowledge and the books that we gave you. Learn from this past lesson and maybe that next competition, that next competition, you guys will be able to beat Division A. All right. Also, just real quick, one last thing for me, and I'm not gonna lie. This is our conference, and you're here to learn about leadership and all, you know, free enterprise and American heritage. It's not about winning. Got me? It's not about winning. And before we go, just remember to have fun and to learn from these experiences so you guys can pass it to your schools. All right. <laughs>